So hello and welcome you all to Sale to MDS Dental Academy. I am Dr. Malai, pediatric dentist and assistant professor in College of Dental Sciences. So as parents, today we are here with one more image-based lecture. You know your image-based questions are the important section of your need and aims MDS. Today the subject of focus is periodontics. So you know we often ignore periodontics and Whenever the image-based questions come from the periodontics, students often get confused and make mistake. Why? Because when we are doing the BDS, often we have seen the case of periodontitis only. Hardly we see the gingival enlargement and few tumor related to gingival we see. And in instrument, most often we have used the Williams probe. And other types of the instrument we hardly get to see or we hardly get to learn. So please aspirants try to focus on each and every image I am showing in this lecture. I have jot down few important images. The remaining images we are going to deal in the virtual lectures. So friends let's get started. So what this picture depicts. So this is your fibrous euphilies. Euphilies means what? Enlargement. So these are kind of enlargement. Now we have to see what it is so as friend this is your peripheral fibroma you can see the pink form mass from the gingiva and it is uninflamed so it is your peripheral fibroma what it is it is your peripheral cementifying fibroma it is same like your peripheral fibroma but you can see the foci of the semanticals so this is the main feature which help you differentiate between the peripheral fibroma and peripheral cementifying fibroma remember as parents fibrous you feel is they all are reactive lesion okay you can see in the isolated area in the oral cavity and they are also known as frog that is the focal reactive overgrowth now let's see the angiogranuloma so what it depicts as parents granuloma means what you can see the granulomatous tissue and here we can see the angiogenesis means increased blood vessels so whenever there is a more reddish mass it can be your granuloma so this example is your pyogenic granuloma and this is your pregnancy you feel is most often you can see in the pregnant ladies and it is also known as pregnancy tumor remember experience it looks uh, like a reddish mass and it is a bilobular mass it means what the mass will be on the buccal side also and on the labial side also often we can see the interconnected area so this is your angiogranulomas this is pyogenic granuloma and this is your pregnancy euphilis now experience what this is this is your peripheral giant cell granuloma so it is very highly vascular lesion you can see it is a purple reddish in color and often tendency to bleed most of an exam what type of question they ask they ask identify the uh, diagram in the color plate and they will write one statement that it is very highly vascular with purplish red color and tendency to bleed so in such cases it is your peripheral giant cell granuloma now experience what are they they are often mistaken as reactive lesion but they are not reactive lesion so what this this is your hemangioma in the mandibular right quadrant this is your mucosal seen in the palatal minus salivary gland and this is your lateral periodontal cyst projecting labially causing localized gingival enlargement now experience whenever we see this swelling in the gingival area we often consider it as a periapical abscess but try to differentiate between the gingival and the periodontal abscess so this is your gingival abscess seen near the gingival margin or in the papillary area and remember experience your periodontal abscess is diffuse in nature okay where is your periapical abscess we can see near the apex of the tooth and when you reflect the flap you can see your bone loss near the apex of the tooth this is the contrasting feature between your periodontal and periapical abscess and what this is aspirin this is your pericoronitis that is the abscess of your pericoronal flap and remember one important statement in your currents are that pericoronitis act as an incubation zone for your anak that is your acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis 
Then as parents, we will focus about the inflammatory gingival enlargement. So why inflammation occur in the gingiva? Because of some kind of the local irritating factors. So in this diagram A, you can see the plaque and calculus present, which causes a gingival enlargement. Here you can see it occurs because of the ill-fitting processes. You can see the crown has been prepared and the processes was there. And because of that, your gingiva has become the inflamed. And mostly you can see in the patient undergoing orthodontic treatment. So if your orthodontic brackets and wire are not properly placed or patient has very poor hygiene, it can cause such gingival swelling that is your inflammatory gingival enlargement. Now as parents, we come to the drug influenced gingival overgrowth. First of all, you should know which all drug causes. So three groups are there. There is the anti convulsants. Commonly you remember your phenytoin, your topiramate and your pyrimidone. Then immunosuppressants, we have cyclosporine, tractolimus, and in calcium channel blockers, we have a dipine, then we have the virapamil. So these are the drugs which can cause your gingival enlargement. Most common experience after gingival enlargement, if get infected, we can see such reddish overgrowth. And this, you can see the overgrowth that is fibrotic and lathery. So these are the examples for your drug-induced or drug-influenced gingival overgrowth. Now as friends you can see here this is your idiopathic or we can say hereditary gingival fibromatosis. Then this is your gingival inflammation we can say gingival enlargement seen in the pregnant patient. So whenever we can see in the multiple interproximal enlargement the cause can be say it is because of the hormonal changes during pregnancy and such enlargement are known as conditioned gingival enlargement. Why? Because enlargement occur because of presence of some condition. Now, what this is experience? This is your plasma cell gingivitis. Most often occurs because of any kind of the irritating factors like uh, the patient is allergic to uh, chewing gum or allergic to some food products, which is also known as allergic gingivitis. So you can see your gingiva is reddish, and most often it involves your attached gingiva, and you can see slight granular appearance. Fine experience, then we come to the vaginal granulomatosis. The classical feature for this is strawberry gingivitis. You can see the exophytic gingival overgrowth. Fine, and it is, remember it is also known as strawberry gingivitis. Okay, you can see the reddish purple exophytic gingival overgrowth. Now sometimes you can see the false gingival enlargement. Where you can see there is a problem in the underlying bone. Like you can see here the whole line gingiva is swell. But you cannot see any clinical features of gingiva. But it is because of the underlying bone development. Fine. So these are the cases for your false gingiva enlargement. So now experience you have to remember this decision tree. Very important for your case based question also. Looks little bulky but it is very easy to understand. So most often the gingival enlargement can be isolated or generalized. Isolated you have to see whether it is chronic or acute. Chronic, focus on the color, pink pale. You can say if it is firm, fibroma, soft compressible, can be a lipoma or cyst. What is a papilloma? If it is reddish, bluish in color, if it is anterior area, it can be a pregnancy syphilis. Posterior, your PGCG and non-specific can be hemangioma or inflammatory enlargement. Acute, you have to Focus on the tooth and flap. If it is non-vital, then can be your periperiolysis or endoperial lesion. Then, if it is acute vital disease, that then if it is near the gingival margin, it is gingival abscess and diffuse and unwalling your attached gingiva, then periodontal abscess. Remember, experience a periodontal abscess involve the attached gingiva, very very gingival abscess involve your marginal gingiva, and flap it can be your pericoronitis. Then general enlargement, you can see it is firm, pink and resilient. If it is papillary, you can say if there is any history of drug, it be because of drug only. If it is diffuse, you can consider it a systemic involvement. If it is negative, it can be your hereditary fibromatosis or false enlargement. Positive, then can, syndromes can be there. In non-specific, if it is there, you have to go for the histopathology or lab investigation. Now, as far as you can see, if it is a reddish because of some local factors, inflammation. Local factors are very few, then you have to consider, yeah, there can be a presence of systemic disorders, like uh, if it is 
positive, it can be your systemic manifestation of leukemia, mellitus, your strawberry gingivitis, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, Sturge Weber syndrome. And if your systemic contribution is negative, it can be because of your pregnancy, there is hormone associated diet, vitamin C disorder, incompetent leaf, patient having a mouth breathing, or any case of the allergy like your charcoal, toothpaste, chewing gum food, it is your plasma cell gingivitis. Remember, experience whenever any ginger enlargement is there, the confirmation is made with the help of histopathology and lab investigation. Now, experience periodontal instrumentation. So, we we'll see a few important instruments. So, these are your needle holders. Remember, your needle holders have a very small beak. Then, this is a tissue forceps. They have a serration inside which hold the tissues during your surgical procedures. Then, aspirin, this is your sickle scalers. Remember the difference between the scalers and curatage. Scalar help to remove your supragingival calculus, wherever the curatage help you remove your subgingival calculus. Remember, aspirin, the scalers are inserted no longer than 1 mm below your gingival margins. Then, this is your more scalar. Remember, it's a miniature scalar. Because they have the miniature blade, most often for the mandibular anteriors where there is a narrow interproximal space. The straight shanks are often used for the anterior teeth and premolars wherever the contraangle shanks for the posterior teeth. Then experience most often we have seen this shepherd hook explorer which are used for your examination of caries and irregular margins of the restoration. But in periodontics, we have different type of explorer. This is your straight explorer experience used for the calculus detection in shallow pockets. This is your curved explorer, same used for the calculus detection both in your normal and shallow pockets. And this is your pigtail and cow horn explorer. So you can see experience the different shape looks like the pigtail and cow horn. Use for your normal sulcus as well as shallow pockets, but not more than cervical third of the root. Then we have the urban type of explorer. Here the tip is 90 degree to the lower shank. Most often used for the narrow pockets. And this is the 11 by 12 type explorer. I have marked a different color. Why? Because it is used for the deeper pockets. Here the tip is bent at 90 degree like your urban explorer only. Example remember ODU that is our all dominant in your city 11 by 12, 11 by 12 AF. Experience in your exam that is not much important to remember your number of this explorer. Better you remember the corresponding name. Now we have the gingivectomy knife that is a Kirkland knife experience then, and this is your urban interdental knife. Then in this diagram you can see the different location for your internal buell incision for different type of flap. So you can see these two indicate your undisplaced flap where the incision is directed towards the side of the bone. Wherever in this modified treatment and apical displaced flap, the incision is directed at the bone crest. Then curates used for removing your deep subgingival calculus root planning for your altered cementum and removing the soft tissue lining the periodontal pocket. Remember these curates are finer than sickle scalar and they provide good access to deep pockets that's why they are used for the subgingival calculus removal. Most often they are of two types that's a universal and area specific. So area specific experience you can from the name only you can know use for the specific areas. They have one cutting edge and they curved in two planes and their offset blade is around 60 to 70 degree. So you can see experience the cutting edge is one only and they are curving in two planes. So you can see experience these are the two planes they are curving. So these are your area specific curates. Then we come to the crazy curates. So we have different type 1, 2, 2, 3, 4 used for the anterior teeth, 5, 6 used for the anterior teeth and premolars, 7, 8, 9, 10 for your facial and lingual posteriors, 11, 12 for mesial posteriors and 13, 14 for your distal posteriors. Remember experience whenever you are inserting curate, the lower shank should be parallel to the tooth surface and 
it should make an angle of 70 degree. The cutting edge should make an angle of 70 degree with the tooth surface. Then we have different curates. This is your number 15, 16. These are the after five curates and these are the muni curates. Nowadays, muni curates are often used because they provide excess and reduced trauma. The best example for them is your Morse scalar. Then as present, these are your surgical chisel and hose. Remember, chisel are used with a push stroke and hose are used for the pull stroke. Often used during your periodontal surgery for removing and reshaping bone. The example for them, this is your Ostenbeck chisel. Most often come in number one and two. And this is your Rhodes chisel. Then we have surgical files. You can see in the diagram as present, this is your skull guard and sugarman files. Most often used to smoothen your rough bony ledges and to remove all areas of necrotic bone. Then experience this is the fenestration example and this is your dehiscence. Then these are a few squash periotrivers. Most often when you go for the periodontal treatment, sometimes the tip of the instrument get broke and they can ledge into your pocket area. So to retry them, we have a squash periotrivers. They are double-handed instruments and they are magnetized instruments. You can see in this diagram how they hold the broken instrument tips. Then as students, these are the important diagram and the hot favorite for the examiner, the wall defects. So three wall defect means what? Three walls are there. So you can see in this diagram, this is the, for right lateral incisor, three walls are present, that is your buccal, lingual and distal walls. This is your two wall defect where only your lingual and distal walls are present. And this is your three wall defect where only your distal wall is present. Then experience this is a Florida probe system. So you can see there is a handpiece and associated structure. Most often used for assessing your pocket depth and to assess your clinical attachment level. Then which this system is there? This is your periotron. Most often used for your GCF, that is your gingival cryocular fluid analysis. So how it is done? First the saliva is removed from the tooth surface with the cotton wool. Then the perio paper is placed in the pocket to collect GCF. And then this moist paper is placed between the two jaw of your periotron to assess your fluid content. Then experience, we are going to talk about few probe. This is your WHO probe. The identical point for them is 0.5 mm ball at the teeth. They have color coding between the 3.5 to 5.5 mm. And this is your oral irrigator for supragingival irrigation. Then we have Williams probe. Remember, comes in both color and non-color coding. The markings are there between 1 to 10 except the 4 and 6 markings are not there. Then this is the UNC 15 probe, 15 mm long probe, color coding at 5, 10 and 15 mm. Then we have Michigan O probe, they are of two types, one with the William markings where the 4 and 6 marking are missing and the Michigan O probe only with marking at 3, 6, 8 mm. Then as we done, these are a few blades, number 15 blade used for the thinning flaps and for journal purposes that is for all intraoral surgery. And this is the miniature part of your 15 blade, there is a 15 C blade used for the initial scalloping type incision and its slim design allow the operator for incising into the narrow interdental portion of the flap. Then we have the number 12 D blade. It is a big shaped blade with cutting edges on both sides. It allows the operator to engage the narrow restricted areas with both pushing and pulling cutting motions. So as parents, that was all about today's premier lecture. The remaining images we are going to deal in the virtual class. Any doubt, any help, you can contact me. The number is there, website is there, email ID is there, and you can check out our YouTube channel for all the videos and playlists that help you in your preparation. So please, aspirants, take care, work hard, and keep on moving on your dream path.